This is Man, Man vs. Mood. Mood. Episode 13, I do believe, on this fine, wonderful two days after Christmas. I am your host, Will, joined as always by... Gary, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Why you got to be like that, Mike? <laughs> to my left is... This is Mike. Mike and... Magic Mike in my thought. I mean, this is Gary. Gary. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> we are without Jen again. Christmas festivities for all... We've been on a little bit of a different schedule recording, so we're we're working things out. Jen probably won't be with us quite as often, but definitely be in the fold for sure. Well, boys, we made it. We survived Christmas. Everyone's happy and healthy, I'm sure. I need a vacation from Christmas. 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 From Christmas. I need a vacation from eating. Um, oh, God, here too. <laughs> how about you, Gary? Did you... Uh, overeat or did you stay uh that food you were posting <laughs> was really starting to piss me off like i was contemplating blocking you here's here's will just cooking up you know uh-huh. some sort of martha stewart fucking <laughs> concoction of like prime rib mixed with bacon bits and like bacon i'm like butter. yeah i was like and then he opened it up and it was just like pink and yeah. delicious and just like it was We're one of the best the prime ribs I've. The only thing I would do different is I didn't smoke it this time. Yeah. A lot of times I will smoke it, but I made the bacon butter quick, quick uh, recipe here. Just as I was going into the kitchen to start preparing it, yeah. my wife had cooked a pound and a half of bacon for the seven layer salad we made. I'm looking. I'm like, there's a bunch of grease and bacon bits in there, and I'm like. Oh. Here's the softened butter I was going to use to put all over. I'm like, oh, no, we're doing this. So I took the butter. I mixed it in the pan because it had cooled down enough by then. Mixed it in the pan, got it all, put it all together, slathered. Oh, it was so good. It was absolutely one of the best prime grade. But it was prime grade as well, which definitely Did you get it from, uh, what's his name, from Safeway and Washington? Oh, yeah. My boy Ross. Ross. Always hooks it up. Four bones, just the way I like it. And it was, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it looked absolutely amazing. No, I'm, I'm, in fact, I still have some left. I why, wasn't going to bring, you bring You didn't bring any. No, I I, I, I mean, went. Gary at least brought us some Voss water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Today's episode is brought to you by Voss. Yeah, exactly, right? I, uh, no, it's, you just take a little bit at a time and let it melt in your mouth, even when it's cold, Yeah, because it's so damn good. Yeah. It really is good, but... What are we blessed with today, boys, as we wind down the year? Our last recording of 2021. Wow. I know. It's only four it's days been a year. left, so it has. Gary's eyeballing me. I think he's kind of like, he may go to my house and steal the hunk of meat out of my refrigerator. I'm just going to steal your entire fridge. Like- well, we're going to make fresh <laughs> pasta this evening and have carbonara with oh. the leftover prime rib. Because I got my wife a new pasta maker for Christmas. So. I'm I'm not even gonna look at Will anymore. I don't you, even care. You have because we haven't been <laughs> friends that long. You have not been subjected to the decade of food yeah. postings that yeah. that everyone else has. Because yeah. that's pretty much what my social media is dominated by is food. But yeah, I mean, for me, like um, I've lost ten pounds in nice. 35, 40 days. Wow. Look at you. So I mean like I'm trying to I've gained ten pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I gained ten ten pounds in the last thirty five hours. Right. So yeah, I don't know. Like it's just been like a a personal challenge, you know, for myself. I mean obviously this time of year it's one of the hardest years to like lose weight and oh, get in shape and absolutely. stuff like that. And um like I've really just been trying to, you know, like drive past things that have been you know, comfort places and stuff like that for me. Like, okay, tell me one of them or us. Well, I love Popeyes. I mean, <laughs> needless to say. <laughs> You're not a Chick-fil-A guy, huh? I mean, Chick-fil-A I, over Popeyes? Like, no, I, I mean Popeyes I, over. I like Chick-fil-A, but it's weird because, like, I never really think about having it until it's Sunday. And then it's closed on right? Sunday. Yeah, so I'm like, it really doesn't matter. Um, but also for me, too, like, I'm delivering to all these grocery stores and stuff uh, like that. So just walking by the bakeries. I love donuts and cookies and just cookies. Yeah. Cookies are so good. I love so cookies. yummy. Did you see his voice inflection changed? I think he likes cookies more than Popeye. Yeah. Cookies. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like, I just think that, um, like I'm really just trying to, you know, 
be intentional about my goals and stuff like that. And, you know, like I really just want to challenge myself and just get better. So absolutely yeah. getting better by having less of you here. Yeah. This is Mike, true. what do we, and you're thankful for that. Do you have something in particular that you're thankful for though? Besides um, losing? I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that we went out and talked about losing weight, like on the podcast. Cause I think that if that never would have happened, I never would have like really truly put it like into the atmosphere and never really tried. Um, so yeah, I mean, here's to the challenge. Let's no, do that, it. that, but <laughs> that's what it's all, all about. And I had the same intention as you of trying to, and I did hold my weight pretty well until the last week. Yeah. And then I went absolutely fucking batshit insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You can do that. You yeah. Can, oh, yeah. You can break. And I was still in the gym and all that. Yeah. So it, yeah. it wasn't. But I, yeah. Anyway, Mike, what about you? I mean, I, I'm i thankful for this season. Just, you know, I went up on Christmas Day. We took up the kids and we went up to Old Man's Pass. Oh, really? Man, they had four feet of snow up no there. Kidding. It was Damn. It was winter wonderland for sure. So Where's going, that at? Uh, it's outside, up north of Carson mm -hmm. okay. in the gorge. So, yeah. but yeah, well, it was, it was awesome. So lot. I'm grateful. I have a truck yeah. and my girlfriend has a four runner so he can get up there. <laughs> Cause there were some people in the ditches that looked like they oh, were no just kidding. all wheel drive. Yeah. Ooh. But See, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Did a fire up there. Just <laughs> dug out the snow down to the dirt and oh, so kind awesome. of built up the snow around it. So it, all the heat would just rise. It's all, I've, I've I've done that up in that area. I spend a lot of time up there. I love it. Snowshoeing. Yeah. Went snowshoeing for my early Christmas present when oh, I was in nice. Sun River. So, yeah, I just I love being able to go and explore and do fun things like that. Be That's outside. Awesome. I'm about to go do that tomorrow. You're going to what, Fossil? Yep. Going to the wonderful central Oregon town of Fossil, and we've got a place out there. Heard so there's a lot of dry bones there. There are a lot of uh, – how <laughs> – Bones, not as I haven't found any bones, but you can actually. No, I'm talking about like old people. Oh yes, no, there, there's a lot of those. Isn't that what's named after fossils? Well, no, there actually is <laughs> fossils there that you I can know. dig up. It's wow. uh, yeah. So if you ever want to do something like that, they're behind the high school. You can dig up fossils. You give them five bucks for the just access just kind of support the school and you can go it's usually uh, leaves and stuff like that in the stone but oregon state has an extension there and they actually their paleo um institute or whatever but they have a big dinosaur in the because you can go in and check it out yeah have a big big dinosaur in there and there's all kinds of cool history and hmm. whatnot but yeah they they have legitimate fossils there so i'm um, I'm merely asking for a friend, but uh, when you do go, <laughs> do you plan on leaving some of that prime rib? No, there will be, <laughs> okay. right. there will be no more prime rib. I bet we okay. have uh, maybe a pound and a half left. I have one bone. So, yeah, probably a pound and a half, two pounds, but it will be gone this evening okay. with fresh carbonara that we will make with the fresh noodles that Ooh. we'll make. That's great. Except for my gluten-free ones. Yeah. Those aren't nearly as good. But, yeah, no. Okay. won't be enough for you, though. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. So we're going to be looking for a new co-host. Yeah, right. Anybody out there that likes podcasting. <laughs> I will make one of those for us or anything. You haven't yeah. had my pulled pork, my yeah. brisket. You haven't had the ribs. You haven't yeah. had the full Will experience yet. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we know what Will's favorite or uh, grateful for. He's grateful for his own cooking. Yeah, no, I, I am. And not sharing. <laughs> right. But – talking about I did it, share no I, I did share it was just not with you guys <laughs> <laughs> what else did we have we had yeah the seven layer salad you ever mm -hmm. had seven layer salad mm -hmm. for seven seven layer burrito but yeah ooh. well no not that just got the this really good dressing and bacon and peas and oh it's, so it's kind of like a meal yeah but it's a salad that yeah. you want to eat not feeling like a rabbit I hate peas Oh, no. See, the peas are the best because you put them on when they're frozen still. Yeah. And then you let it kind of marinate for a few hours and they defrost, but they have a little pop when you eat. Oh, I love that. I love peas. I don't like cooked peas that much. They're kind yeah. of mushy and meh. Yeah. But these are... Frozen peas. Okay. You put, the, you put them on frozen and yeah. then when you... You don't serve it right away so that they warm up some, but they... Yeah, they pop. Really good. So... 
I'll try some frozen peas. And you try cereal, <laughs> cereal and water. Well, or what was it, Jen? Uh, had she had a grilled cheese with jam or ketchup or something yes, like that? No, I don't. It was something. I think it was jam. Yeah. And I think I would be much more like a grilled cheese with jam than eating cocoa puffs with water. Like it's not cocoa. Insane it's person. golden grams. I don't give a shit what it is. <laughs> Any cereal <laughs> with fucking water on it. I, I have to use the F word when, when I talk about yeah. this because I cannot still wrap my mind around it. No, the only. And F I saw you do it. So I know it's real. The only F word you need is fantastic. No. Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> No, not at all. Again, today's episode is brought to you by Boss Water. Boss, yeah. Here's Cereal. the will not sharing his meat. Yeah. Wait. Hello. Say, anyway, well, so today's that's a episode. That's altogether. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Today we wanted to uh, recap 2021 and, and as for us as, as human beings and kind of look into 2022 and, and talk about some of the goals that we've set for ourselves or we're, we have a few more days, but just what the future kind of looks like it's bright it's it's shining but we want to have some defined goals so that we know what we can look forward to what we can accomplish things like that and we don't have to be set in stone quite yet but more of a reflection and what we've learned in 2021 to help set those goals for 2022 up and and goals are a more moving target for me because you know, your, your life is always changing what you, you know, your beliefs, things like that. But it's important to, to know what you're, you're looking forward to. I think for me though, I like short term goals that mm -hmm. create longer term goals because I'm not super good at saying, Oh, I'm, I'm going to accomplish X in 12 months. Like when I was losing weight, I did not look at it like, I have to lose 200 pounds and I'm going to do it in X amount of time because that was so, I mean, talk about something that was depressing, looking down at a scale and, and knowing that that's what's ahead of me. I couldn't tackle it. I had to go, okay, I'm going to go by 10 pound increments and get to that. You know, once I hit that, okay, now or even maybe it was five pounds, but then I could tick those off more and more and I, and it created momentum for me. And I'm a momentum person. I, that's that's what that's how I, I accomplish pretty much anything is I, I got to get the ball rolling. And mm -hmm. once the ball rolls, I, a lot of times it'll go out of control and who knows how big it'll be. But it's just getting that momentum. Right. What are you laughing at me for? Talking about my balls or something? <laughs> I don't know. Gary's giving me the eye. And I'm like, <laughs> Mike, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Ball's rolling. Go ahead. Yeah, the ball is rolling okay. towards 2022. What do you got for me, Mike? I see something on the tip of your lips. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You're both <laughs> terrible today. Holy shit. We're, we're, what, what are we? We're 13 minutes into the uh, thing. We're almost completely off the track. I'm just happy to see track. you guys. Okay. Yeah, I bet you Good are. thing Jen's not here. <laughs> yeah. How many times do we say that? <laughs> when the when we're not recording and i want yeah i want you to everyone to know that's listening that i am the angel here that these two are the are the devils on my shoulder anyway i'm joking of course he's not joking <laughs> um so for myself for 2022 well let's talk about 2021 oh, first so we're going backwards okay. yeah let's go let's cover 2021 first because it's been a hell of a, a year was a i don't know how to really even put it like it was good and bad, you know, going through a divorce. Yeah. Um, that will be wrapped up in the first part of 2022. Um, but like health wise, just trying to get things under control, like my sleep apnea, weight. I'm having my testosterone check to see if that's playing yeah. into it. Men, go get your testosterone checked, especially, yeah, especially if, if you're, you're over 40. 40. You have to do that. It doesn't mean you it need like to get on. It drops off a freaking cliff. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean you have to get on testosterone or anything. You can do it very naturally, but it is paramount to your health moving forward. They have at-home test kits yep. that's based off saliva, and then they'll they, you set, send that in, and then they'll tell you what your next step is. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's just been a very humbling year, and – but it's been great because this all came out of it, you know, with the podcast and seeing you guys and the way we have clicked with Jen and Gary and Will. We just like, I don't know, it's, it's 
it's like having another family, you know? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and, uh, but I've also cut out a lot of shit out of my life. Stuff that was either was like, I guess you would say it would be a distraction. So cutting out a lot of distractions has really helped me focus on what I want and going forward in my life, whether it's relationally, family wise, health wise, you know, so many different things. Mm -hmm. So good and bad. And I'm as every year usually does. Oh yeah. And you know, things happen. Life happens. We've had some deaths recently and just crazy shit. So hoping 2022 is on the upward trajectory and not, you know, the roller coaster that life typically is. And life is a roller coaster. And and all we can do is, is prepare ourselves. That's one thing that in the last five years I've learned is that probably six, that I don't know what's going to come. I I have no idea, but I've got to make sure that I'm ready for it. Whatever it is, you know, you, you plan for the worst and hope for the best type thing. But if I can at least do that, then mentally, then I can tackle whatever that challenge might be. Mm-hmm. What about you, Gary? What's 2021 look like for you? Um, this last year was just weird because I found myself, um, like in the beginning of the year, being angry because like I like had set goals, you know, in 2020, you know, of, you know, financially, you know, I wanted I wanted to buy another property. I wanted to get some land. I wanted to have like multiple incomes and stuff, but, um, you know, like I got to 2021, you know, I changed jobs and then I looked back and I was just mad. Cause I was like, I didn't achieve this. I didn't achieve that. I didn't get that and that and that. And then, and then I talked to my therapist and she was like, you realize like we're in the midst of like a pandemic, yeah. like life has changed, you know, for like a lot of people. And then I don't know, like I'm just naturally just very hard on myself. Um, you know? So I just think that, you know, just kind of realizing that I made my goals. Um, Some of them I got to, um, like I wanted to get my A-class license. I did that. I went out and I I finished up my associate's degree and stuff like that. That was one of my goals. And I don't know, just to read more. Like I want to read 12 books per year like I did that. And um, just trying to do things that like aren't comfortable to me. Like trying to do things that like, you know, scare me and stuff like that because i'm so used to just being like in my comfort zone and you know so that that's something i think a, a lot of us uh i think most people like to live in that comfort zone but mm-hmm. i want to back up just a hair and and I'm, i want to ask mike this as well i could tell that what you didn't accomplish means more to you than what you did accomplish because you mentioned it first even going back to 2020. Mm-hmm. Mike, uh, I want to get both your takes on this. Do you focus more, and I'm not maybe even talking since we started doing this, because I think we've really been intentional about talking our way through the struggles that we've had and, and being intentional with that, knowing that, hey, we've we've been there, we've done that, and we're better for it. But before we started this, how did you deal with that that constant feeling in the back of your head or that constant voice that says, okay, you didn't do you know, this goal. You didn't accomplish this thing. Mm-hmm. This didn't go as well as you had hoped. Yeah. How have, have you helped yourself to switch your mindset from being down about that to, okay, I didn't quite accomplish those things, but you, you backed it up. And I mm-hmm. think that you were intentional in knowing that, you have accomplished these great things over here though. Mm. How has that changed this year for you? I don't know. Uh, I just think for me, like I, I just naturally like always think about the shot that I miss. And I've, I've always been like that. Always, 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 you know, like I never focus on the like good things. I never think about, you know, you achieve this, you achieve this, you know, you made it through that. Um, or that you even took the shot. Yeah. Because taking the shot is yeah. 98% of it. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, for me, like, I just think that um, just through just trying to attempt to do things that I'm I'm normally not, you know, used to mm-hmm. has just made me just a, a better person. Um, I just think that also, like, before, like, my, my mindset before was, you know, if I fail at something, then I'm not going to try 
you know something else mm-hmm. or or you know my my my, my business i had my uh, business fail and you know like one of my goals uh, you know for the next year is to um, start another business and then maybe you know another one but just before you know before like going through therapy and before reading and stuff like that i never would have known that like so many people have failed you know so many people have just dropped the ball or missed the shot or you know had a failed business or a failed marriage and stuff like that and i just think that for me like i just try to learn just from everything um because i think that fail i mean i've said this before but it means first attempt and learning yeah and that's you know something that i'm trying to instill like in my son is that you know it's okay if you you know miss a dunk you know it's okay if you lose a game or something like that like you just gotta take something from that and learn from that and then try to implement you know what you learned like into the next shot the next dunk the next business the next marriage the next uh you know something else and i just think that for me once i hit a wall i want to try to go through it and or over it and not just stop yeah that that's huge mike what about you as as you've because i know you and i have talked about and we've talked about on the show but we've talked about it off air as well that those things that we we thought we could do or were going to happen they've you know they've caused us a lot of pain and they've caused us a lot of pain in beating ourselves up and we're our own worst critic right oh easily and how so how is that do you think that has changed dramatically this year or is it more of a i think it's a slow shift for myself kind of um, a glacial type thing kind of yeah you know the biggest hurdle, I, I guess, is really just kind of owning up and saying, look, I need to get help for what I'm struggling with. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's not going to change overnight by any means. But with with what I've gone through, it's been – it's really a mindset change, and that's where it really needs to start. So if you want to start doing – like being more grateful for everything you have instead of great, instead of bitching about the stuff you don't have – Start every morning, write down five things that you're grateful for. You know, we've talked about that at nauseum yep. sometimes. So it's it really starts there with the mindset shift and then really surround yourself with people that are of that same mindset. Yeah. So, and that can be much more difficult than I is. think we, we, I think because we have such a tight knit group here, I think that's something that is easier for us to talk about. But most people don't have that because as we have looked outside of our group of four here, we have seen the unwillingness for people to talk about these types of tough issues in an open and almost a pragmatic way. Like this is reality. We're not going to get away from it. Our mental health is here to stay. You can either engage it or you can continue to push it away, but it's not going away. Mm -hmm. It's just like any other health issue you know if you have cancer you can either put your head in the ground and let it eat you or you can proactively try to treat it so that's kind of the uh, you know the same mindset that you know we talk about mindset that i kind of take into all of this you have to engage it Mm -hmm. you have to be mindful we talk about these little things that each of us does you know whether it's write down five things that you're thankful for or talking to your son These are minor things, but going back to, you know, the word intention, if that's what it takes for you to start making those changes and you, you, you listen to us, you know, that's dumb. I would never sit down and write down the, I can just think of it. The act of writing it down, the act of sitting your son down and saying, son, you missed that dunk and they lost the championship, but guess what? This gives you the opportunity to grow more and hit that shot next year. Mm -hmm. You have to think your way through those types of things, which can be the hardest part of all of it. It's hard to think of five things to be grateful for when you're just ragingly depressed. And I I think that's where a lot of people are like, what five major things am I grateful for? It doesn't even have to be major. You just got to start the snowball down the hill and let exactly. it grow into a boulder, you know? And and that's why I like to, when we say what we're thankful for here, you know, and when I've had guests on in the past and I've asked them that, they want to go to the biggest thing like I, you know, I had a grandson or a, I won the lottery or whatever. That's not what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. If you got up and you got your teeth brushed, for some folks, that is a major accomplishment. 
Write yeah. that shit down. Be proud yeah. of it. Own it. Walk around with your head held high. Because Or if, even you're grateful you have food in the cupboards because there's a lot of people around here nowadays that don't, especially yeah. with inflation and everything going crazy high. So And for me, like I I never thought about like being grateful just for the the, the little things. Um but then I had a friend and like I asked him, So what are you thankful for? And he said, I'm thankful just to wake up. And yep. I was just like I never really thought about it like that. And so, yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. Just, you know, just be thankful for the little things, too, because that that all adds up. And and it helps you when when you're in those um, when the, those seasons of, of whether it's change, like going through a divorce. I mean, it's, I can only imagine the the emotional roller coaster that you're riding or you were writing, it's probably better now. I mean, it, ebbs but. And fl- it definitely ebbs and flows, especially around the holiday season with like this holiday season has been very different. And Michelle's been awesome. And it's good. Like really, you know, really looking at that and just kind of giving me that space to be able to, you know, maneuver mm-hmm. um, emotionally through that. But having that support there is, has been great. And that again, goes back to that creating an environment that is, set up for your success. We all came from environments that were not set up for our success, right? I mean, that's why ultimately we're sitting here together is because the way we started was not the typical, well, it might be typical, but I guess, and I don't want to say correct way because that's, I don't think that's the right way to to put it. it. It made us who we are. And as long as we're trying to move forward, then we've got to look back at that and, and at least have a a little bit of appreciation for the fact that we overcame it. And now we're using that experience to help ourselves and then by extension, helping others. So I don't like to say that the bad things that happened in our past were, you know, necessarily bad. It sucked that they occurred, but we're moving forward and hopefully you know, we'll help a lot of people because we endured that pain. Yeah. Well, in for reflection, even of 2021, I would even say it's a reflection been of my entire life. This, this last year has been trying to move forward and not focus and being stuck in the past and trying to relive the past because it's, it's in your past. And it's, I love what you posted on Instagram on our man beer smooth Instagram. Uh, the choice is yours. Hold yourself back forever or heal yourself back together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, you know, that, that was, was very good. Yeah. That was awesome. And I think, for myself and I don't, I'm not, I don't want to speak, speak for the masses, but there's a lot of people that are stuck in the past oh. and they can't move past it, whether it's pain too painful or, you know, whatever I, I get it. Cause I've been there, but if you don't get past that, you're going to be there forever. And I think that, you know, like this Gary, you, you brought this up, your past, you use as fuel for your future. That's different, in my opinion, than being hung up on your past that isn't allowing you to grow as a person. Yeah. I'm like you are. You're you're channeling that negativity or, or bad experience or what it might have been to make positive changes. And I think, Mike, you do a better job of letting go of the past than Gary and I do, if I'm being honest. In, I'm in, maybe outwardly. But I still, I mean, I still hold on to some things. Oh, and, 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 you know, you said, I think it was last show or the show before where there are just some things that you'll probably, we were talking about forgiving people yeah. that you'll probably never be able to let go of. You might forgive them just so that you're not constantly dealing with that in your mind, mm-hmm. but it's never going to go away. That pain that, yeah. that was caused to you. Yeah. But I mean, like it's, it is definitely true. Uh, I think that honestly, since Mike said that, you know, last show about forgiveness, like it's not for them, it's for you. Mm-hmm. Like I've been thinking about that constantly. And really? it's, yeah, like it's, it's funny that you said that too, because even before that or before the show, so I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about that, like how, you know, when you forgive somebody, like you're not letting go, you know, of what they did to you, you're letting go of, you know, for yourself. And it, and that makes perfect sense. And I a hundred percent, you know, agree with you. It's not easy. 
but no. I still want to punch a hole through that person's chest. <laughs> no, I, bro, you know, I, the Indiana Jones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly, exactly. Reach and like, in and pull the heart out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but again, like I just think like it's nice to have safe spaces like this, just to talk about shit like that. And you know, like we're all like on you know separate levels of forgiveness, or you know, like different routes of our experiences in life and stuff like that. So I'm I'm glad that you said that because that really like got me thinking. Like it really made me think like, damn, like I really need to do a better job of like letting go. Cause sometimes I'll just spend too much time just thinking about that. Or, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, get tired, you know, at work or I don't want to work out or whatever else. And I use these things to like channel, you know, channel that like, okay, fuck it, let's go. I I hate to use a like a movie to I don't know you as a as a way to describe it but when Thor has his hammer and he can throw it out but it comes back yeah I kind of look at that like my heart sometimes I throw it out there and it helps and then I I bring it back and a lot of times or not a lot but sometimes it's the hammer is is not what it was yeah and yeah, it's been true. slimed it's yeah. it's been slimed <laughs> it's slimer. been broken whatever it might be and in the past it has absolutely decimated me because i had such high expectations for the other person the other outcome whatever it would be now especially after i've what i've been through you know, from losing my mom to my father-in-law and other personal stuff in the last year and a half with a pandemic on top of it and not quite realizing what that did to me Mm -hmm. and not acknowledging it until probably the last six months, just how much it fucked my head up. It really did with all of those other compounding factors. Now, when I put my heart out there, like, doing things like this or talking with you guys offline about, you know, whatever we talk about when it comes back, it's, it's not anyone else's responsibility to take care of my heart. Mm -hmm. It's my responsibility to take it. And that's a huge mindset change that I have made this year. And this has helped me with that because I, I did that far too much. I relied on other people to take care of my heart. And now when I bring it back, Because I still want it out there doing what it can do. But when I bring it back, I want to be happier with it because of what what I did. And and whether it's boundaries or whatever it might be. But it's not anyone else's responsibility to take care of it. And and once I kind of realized that, that was a big breakthrough for me this year. I mean, just 2021. I I mean, talk about learning who I am. That's a big part of what 2021 has been for me the the things that i've been through that is not what defines me but it is who i am so and and i know that's a little bit of a juxtaposition but just because and what i mean by that is other people's free will was involved in what has happened to me not people dying so much but to a degree but it's it's out of my i i can't control them i can't control what they've done to me And we talk about forgiveness. Some people have done some pretty fucked up things to me for money. But when I look at it, I say, I feel bad for them that money drives them to hurt other people. Because that has, it can't feel good at the end of the day to have a decision that you make when you make, when you wake up in the morning to be, I'm going to hurt this person so I can make money or I can get a better job or whatever because it doesn't it's not just about me so these things when i when i'm I'm learning this this year to forgive and to not harbor on those bad things because that's been my biggest thing now i don't i'm not an outwardly angry angry person i got a smile and all that but in inside i've had more anger than i've ever had in my life i mean just raw uncut just pure anger. Yeah. And I didn't know how to handle that until this year. I really didn't. Cause I had never, exp- I mean, I, I've been angry, but I've never experienced it to the level I had this year. And 
I, I, if I'm going to move forward and be a truly happy person, not a person that I've been in the past, just putting up a face, truly happy, mm-hmm. I have to get to that point where I have fully forgiven them and I, and I do have sympathy and I, I truly do have sympathy for anyone that wakes up and I, I watch these, you know, whether it's American greed or a documentary and see Crazy. the shit that people, I mean, I had somebody the Man. other day at the gym, this, I, I don't think I told this story on the show, but this gentleman was 55 years old and his personal banker stole all of his fucking money and his wife. Wow. And now he's like 65. He rebuilt it all, rebuilt his business, sold his business, and retired last Monday. That's crazy. 55 years old, he was damn near penniless. That's now, amazing. here's where karma comes in. The guy got arrested, spent all the fucking money he stole from everyone defending himself, so now he's not going to prison, which sucks, but he's broke. Wow. And And... The ex-wife. A lot of people want his head, probably. Well, he moved to another state, I guess. But, but that guy showed me. I mean, he obviously he was very well off. I mean, he had a personal banker. That's when you know you've got some money. Mm-hmm. But he smiled at me. He had no ill will towards that guy. He knew that the pain that guy went through, the all the legal proceedings, all the all the bullshit. He's like, I don't worry about that. He goes, my wife, he has a new wife. He has three wonderful kids of his own and three great stepkids. He was able to retire, made it all up in 10 years. And he was smiling and and was so thankful for, for the day, for the opportunity to sit there and bullshit with me because we BS all the time. And, and this guy, I mean, I just learned his name like two weeks ago and we've talked at the gym and stuff for quite some time, but That goes back to that connections. If I wouldn't attempted to make a connection, I wouldn't have learned that and allowed me to go, well, what I lost or what I've been through doesn't even compare. And I'm not trying to Does he listen to our podcast? No. Why not? He knows about it, but it's it's a, I don't know. Maybe he does. He knows about it though. (laughs) Anyway, but I was like, he was able to condense all of that anger down and let go of it and get to a place where... Every time I see this guy, he's smiling. He's see, happy. He, he would be great to have on on here because yeah, and, and, of that success story. Yeah, and how how was he able to overcome? You know, probably the depression. Oh, the oh, he suicidal he said, thoughts. The, I don't know about that, but I mean, well, he, I mean, it could lead to absolutely that easily. the anxiety, being broke, so did losing he, everything other than his kids. Yeah, yeah, that's lost his wife. She left him for the guy, for the banker. That's pretty Mm -hmm. shitty. Yeah. That type of story is like crazy. So, so did he go back into the same type of like business? So he, he luckily he worked for himself and I'm not going to, I don't want to get into his, what he does, but yeah. So he, cause he owned his own business then and he basically started another business and was able to do it and sell that business in 10 years. Yes. He's, I, uh, my guess is he's 64 to 67. That's my guess just by, by looking at him and his wife has not retired yet, but she's going to in August of 2022, man, that's like some like Bernie Madoff stuff right there. Like just going well, in and <laughs> stealing people's money. I know, but like that, that if you watch American greed or any yeah. of that stuff, I mean, we don't quite understand the willingness that a lot of people, I'm not going to say most, not at all. Yeah. It's a very small number of people when you look at the population of the United States. But if it's a million people that are stealing from other people yeah. illegally, I'm not talking about the legal stealing that goes along, illegally wiping people's life savings out. I mean, that's incredible. A million people. And I'll bet you that might be a, a light number. Yeah. I'm, I'm just guessing. But anyway, so, you know, when those story, when I hear those stories, it, it kind of warms my heart and, and it gives me hope. Yeah. And it it teaches me that if this guy can smile after going through all of that, and he has no reason to lie to me, he's. I mean, I could tell I've got a pretty good BS detector that, and he made it a pretty short story. He's like, yeah, well, it happened, and now I'm happy. And that was the. That's all that matters in the end of the story. It doesn't matter what kind of car he drives or how that's much amazing. money he has or anything. 
Dude is happy. And you could not, I couldn't peel the smile off his face because his whole family, his, his, the three grown stepkids and his three kids were going to be there for Christmas. And this dude looked like the Joker on steroids. I mean, his, his smile was from one eye to the other. And that's all that mattered to him. I, I'd like to meet that guy. Like, I, I just, I'll see if he'll, if he'll come on. Yeah. Like, sure. I just love, I love stories like that. Uh, so I just think there's, there's so much like stories like that, Mm -hmm. but obviously not to like that, that level, you know, whether it's that or whether it's Bernie Madoff or I don't know, like you just watch the news and there's just always something crazy happening. You know, people trying to, well, people shoot to shoot family members or, I mean, I saw American greed about that. This guy fucking killed one of his kids to make the insurance money and, and like two other people too. I mean, this is the, this is the the depths that a society based upon money, money and tangible items get yeah. you that and an unwillingness to work because in that American greed, that guy didn't want a job. He just made two hundred thousand dollars and then three hundred or whatever. You want to feel a good story? Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I told you guys. Let's hear it. When I was in Sun River. Uh, so we went to we stayed at the resort there um, and went to the restaurant inside there and First day we met this lady, great lady, gave her 20% tip and all that. So the next day we went in, saw the same lady, said hi to her. Um, and I don't know, I always do this thing and I don't know if you guys ever, if I've talked about it to you guys before, but I'll get my phone out and I'll hold it down and be like, Siri, pick a number between 50 and hundred, but I'll have them do it. I say it into my phone. And so the waitress that helped us that day, <laughs> well, Let's step back a little bit. <laughs> I spilled a little bit of syrup towards Michelle and I used my napkin to wipe it up. And she saw that, you know, I was trying to sop up syrup with a cloth napkin. She brought over a towel, wipe, wipe in the area. Well, she hit my water glass. Oh no. And it went all over me <laughs> on the side, on the seat. My butt's all wet. And she's like, felt horrible. I'm just like, oh, it happens. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, but then when she came back, she had to go do something, drop off some food at uh, one of the rooms or whatever, came back. And I was like, Hey, can we get our bill? And, uh, she's like, Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. You know, I'll do whatever, you know, I'm just like, it's not, it's really not a big deal. It's just water. If it was syrup, it might be a big deal, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, she brought the check out and I'm like, Oh, can you do me a favor real quick? I, so I held the button on the side of my phone. I'm like, the little the little thing comes up right here and i said pick a number between 50 and 100 and 53 came up so i'm like well that's your tip and she's like what no 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 not not at all don't do that don't do that at all and uh we had found out when we were talking that she has some kids and i don't know if she's married or what but that as we have kids and christmas presents a lot of times they want more and more expensive shit no of course so um I told her that was her tip and and uh, wrote it on the bill, but I doubled it. I didn't give her just 53. I gave her 106. And so she had no idea. We didn't stay to watch her reaction, but that older lady that helped us the day before, I'm like, how much cash do you have, Michelle? <laughs> she goes, uh, I don't know, here. So she handed me her cash. I think it was like 80, 80 bucks maybe. And I'm like, Merry Christmas. And just handed That's it amazing. to the other lady. But it was funny because when we were leaving, we could hear her in the kitchen going, they gave me $80 cash. They, you know, and, and so awesome, blah, blah, blah. Now I can actually pay, buy Christmas presents for my kids and, oh, wow. or my uh, grandkids. And it was just, it was really cool to hear that. So yeah. I wish I would have been able to see that other lady's, um, you know, Face response of what reaction. happened. But it feels so good to just walk out and be like. Yeah. And and to have the means to be able to do that. I know there's a lot of people that don't have that those means, but just to bless other people in a society society that we have that's driven by money and you know Greed. things. And and but I, I think if you use money's a tool. Oh, if absolutely. If you use it as an end all be all, then you're probably not going to be very happy in your life because you can't enjoy things. Or if you tie your identity to it. Yeah. 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 And and I've done that in the past. Oh, yeah. As a realtor. I think we all have. As a realtor, I set goals. I will hit, want to hit my yearly goal. Like last year, I set a goal of 250 in gross commission income that I wanted to make. And uh, I didn't hit it. And I was just beating myself up. But I only missed it by like $5,000. Yeah. 
It wasn't like, oh, I made this, you know, I, I wasn't a good, I made this much. I was focused on why didn't I make that last five? Yeah. yeah. And that goes back to exactly what we were saying, where we beat ourselves up for the things we perceive to be a failure when we probably had maybe 20, you know, accomplishments that allowed us to almost get it. And in 80% of a goal is a hell of a lot better than a hundred percent of nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what we have to remind ourselves of. And I know that that is something that I have struggled with because I challenge myself with so many things physically that most people, you I mean, you guys wouldn't, you don't deal with what I deal with. And so it's not things that are easy to you aren't easy to me. And so I have to remind myself of, of that from time to time that at least you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. You're moving forward and you're gaining or whatever it might be. But we, when we hold ourselves to a higher regard and that might be, you know, if my handicap or if I shoot an 80 on the golf course and I shot an 84, but damn it, I always hit an 80 or, you know, you make, you score 20 points a game or whatever, mm -hmm. and you fall short of that. What allows us to get to those, that point where we can accomplish something is the fact that we do expect ourselves to do great things. Yeah. And that's something that I think a lot of us, you know, a lot of people, first of all, don't expect great things of themselves because they don't think they're capable of it mm -hmm. when that is absolutely not true. You're capable of incredible things, but you have to give yourself permission to do that. And we've talked about permission on the show before, but it's, it's so important to say to ourselves in those times where we want to pack it up and say, I can't do this, that no, we can. And, and we will that, the can and then the will afterwards, the will to get through those tough seasons is what it makes us, it makes us happy, right? It's not the money because money, we can always get money. We can go get more money. You can work yourself to the bone. You can miss your kids. You can miss life you know, to get money. You know, what's funny is people think money will make them happier. Oh, I thought no. the same thing last in 2020 wasn't a bad year work wise. 2021 this year has not been a bad year work-wise um but i look at at yeah you know, i always ask for where i'm at for the year from our office um payroll person and uh i look at that and i'm just like i've never been more depressed looking at i've made this amount of money i all my debts pay are, are paid off i have x amount sitting in the bank but i don't give like i'm not happy and contemplating killing myself and just everything mm -hmm. you know it because my marriage fell apart um things were going on with my kids which is making me feel like something's going on like i failed as a parent um so all those other outside forces you know just really money didn't fucking matter no. at the end of the day you come in with nothing you leave with nothing yeah that's true so why run over everybody just to get more money or more means, whatever. And, and I think that, that, you know, that's obviously an existential question that we all contemplate from time to time. But at the end of the day is, the, I think an easy, succinct way to say it is that we're social people. And when we surround ourselves with the wrong people, maybe, or we're holding ourselves to a standard that is based on a car or a trip or something like that rather than solid relationships. I mean, I know that in my past I have in, ended relationships because I just flat out couldn't afford to hang. Yeah. And I, I refused to be made to feel a lesser person because I didn't have a new car or I couldn't go on that trip. And I've had relationships like that where my, I mean, people I thought were my best friends I didn't have the cool cars and they were questioning me on that. And I'm like, I'm fucking 25 years old, man. I can't drive a $75,000 car <laughs> and I won't or, you know, have this out or the other. And it just, it hurt to break off a relationship like that, but it was necessary for my own mental well being, mm -hmm. And that was damn near 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think about that from time to time, but it was the right move for me because 
I just, I made a commitment to my family and that I was going to be able to go see my kids games and do all that rather than push a fat ride or have, you know, big fancy watches or whatever it might be. Yeah. Gary, as you move into 2022 and you think about the, the things that you've been contemplating since just last week, when we talked about forgiveness, has that changed the way you look at 2022 and the things that you want to accomplish? And I'm not, when I say accomplishments, I'm not talking tangible necessarily. I'm talking mm-hmm. about internally, um, you know, with your family, kids, whatever it might be. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, you know, as I move into 2022, um, so I just think about just uh, being intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think it's easy just to make goals and say, you know, you're going to do things. But then to really talk about like what it's going to take to get to that point and to do these things, that's what makes it, you know, a little more difficult. Um, and f- and for me, it's funny, you know, because I'm sitting here and I'm listening you know, to you guys talk and um, so I'm just thinking like all these things, um, you know, that I'm hearing you guys say, you know, as far as, um, you know, uh, just just wanting more and wanting to help more and wanting to give back, you know, like it makes me reflect in my life and think about you know where I was you know like at certain times and stuff like that and I just think for me like in 2021 I found myself being away from people more and just being more reserved you know because I was around people that were just up to no good really I was around people that were you know just not good people not you know trying to be you know joyous um you know not trying to help others and stuff like that they were trying to you know just just do bad things and i think for me um you know just putting up help healthy barriers and stuff like that you know um you know as far as making sure that i'm like in the right mindset the right mind space and um you know just you know, just trying to be better like every single day um and boundaries i think I think for you, boundaries have been a huge part of your growth. Oh, I know definitely. they have been for me because mm-hmm. I've, I think you discovered boundaries a little bit before that we did just from I, my conversations. I think conversations. having Jen here, really hearing her boundaries yeah. around a lot of things has helped really redefine mine mm-hmm. yeah. in a lot of ways. But yeah, I've set some boundaries and I really like cut off some people and even family members in mm-hmm. that were just like I, mentally or emotionally. I can't, I can't take it right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's your, not your responsibility to make them happy. No. That's, I think in family, because family and friends, they can be interchangeable, but family has a, a much deeper rooted connection to us. And especially if there are things that happened as a kid, we sometimes take that challenge to make sure that they're happy over our happiness. I know that's probably the biggest thing that I have learned about myself in 2021 is that a lot of people's happiness depended on me dancing a jig well the jig's up and me no dance anymore and that makes them unhappy but it's not my job yeah. to make them happy well and, and the sad thing is, is a lot of people rely on their happiness from other people yeah, well, instead yeah. of finding it internally and i'm huge to blame for that mm. you know i've always looked to other people for my happiness but this year has really been that wake up call of what does make me happy. If there's one thing, and I'm going to put you guys to the test here real quick that you could name in 2021 that made you happy. What, what could you name? If there was one thing like boundaries, um, accepting your past, whatever it might be could, and maybe we'll come back to it in just a minute, but Is there something that you could put your thumb on for me? Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. For me, for me, it's just a matter of like to like keep going. Um, You know, I just think like, so again, like it's so easy just to quit. Like it's so easy just to be like, oh, well, this, this and this happened to me or, oh, you know, well, my business failed or my marriage failed or I lost my job or this or that or whatever. Um, I just think that for me, it's just always been something that I've, never really like thought about until this year is just my my uh will just to like keep going and to like want to be better um you know because i've been um you know because growing up you know if if anything happened just quit you know if that your design yeah your structure was yeah and i just think 
uh, you know, just just by being around better people and people that like want to help the community and people that want better for their family and for their self and stuff like that. Like it's kind of, you know, taught me and like showed me that like, man, like when a barrier comes up, when a roadblock comes up, don't fucking quit. Like don't quit. Don't turn around. Just go through that shit. Like yeah. go through the wall. Cause there's always going to be something that you're going to learn. There's always going to be something that you'll take away. Um, and those things are just so important. I think honestly, Oh, they're incredibly important. And you learn something when you solve the problem. Yeah. Mike, you were shaking your head vehemently. Yes. That you can name something for me. It was forgiveness, forgiving other people for their sins against me was a huge like weight off of me, mm-hmm. which if I don't have to carry that around, I'm a lot lighter. You know, I, I'm happier. I'm more jovial. I'm just out there. And when I'm stuck in the muck and really feeling shitty about myself or just hating life, I always try to like give back to other people. Cause that I get more out of that than anything. Mm -hmm. So by forgiveness is actually by forgiving a lot of the people in my past, not to their face, but just on paper or whatever, and just putting it out there and just releasing it. It's let me be able to reach out to more people and, and really see where other people are hurting to try to, to pour into their life and be someone of support that way. That's a, that, that actually sparked a question that, is something that I struggle with that I would like to hear how the two of you deal with it regarding forgiveness. I have attempted and, and done, I I have forgiven people, like you said, not necessarily to their face, but I have forgiven them, but I still have negative feelings that come back regarding the situations that I was involved in. How do you guys deal with that when you have, you have kind of had that finality of forgiving them and you let that negative energy flow back and something reminds you of that person or a situation. Is that something that you've dealt with at all where it's kind of like a rebound to the forgiveness? Yeah. I mean, I I get triggered because I mean, some of the people I have forgiven still live in the area and I'll drive by a street or a place that I've went to and, or ran into them or whatever. I mean, you, you still do get triggered, but it's how you respond to that. Mm -hmm. And you just have to like take five minutes or five seconds or whatever, and just deep breath and kind of just let release it. Yeah. Be like, Nope, I'm not letting this affect me. I've already forgiven it. I'm letting it go. I'm not going to take it in. It's you have to give yourself permission to reject it. Mm -hmm. And if you are openly, willing to accept it in, well, then you're going to go through those emotions and those feelings again. Yeah. And you'll probably have to repeat the step. It's not like a one-time step. Oh, I forgive them. It's you feel forgive them in, in different stages. And that's what I was going for was I want, I want to hear that process that you have, Gary, how about you? Is that something that even in, if it's been the last few days of you, as you have contemplated forgiveness more, has there been a rebound even in this short period of time or because I know that, I mean, you hit the nail on the head perfectly. I will see something or hear something and a lot of those negative thoughts will come back, but I want to maintain that forgiveness. And I think that, I think that's a a good way of of saying it is maintaining that forgiveness because it isn't a one time thing. Is that something that you've ever encountered Gary? Definitely. I mean, for me, I'm I'm still working on the forgiveness thing. Um, we so, all are too. Yeah, yeah. That, make no mistake, everyone. Yeah. We're all working on it, and we all have. You know, we're it's the Great Wall of China, and we're at different parts of the steps mm-hmm. going up it. Definitely, yeah. And like you know, something that I constantly try to tell myself is, you know, we're all human. We're all flesh. We're all gonna make mistakes and stuff like that. But also, like. Um, there's just certain people that I I don't want to say that I'll never forgive them, but it's just going to take more work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's going to take more just facing like what it is like that I won't forgive about them. Like, is it the issue that happened? Is it that person? Is it 
you know, some about the, the situation. Um, but I just think that I'm still working on it. I mean, it's definitely one of the things that I'm working toward, um, you know, and working on. And I just think that it's, you know, good to hear, you know, what Mike says about this stuff, because I just think that for me, you know, like when somebody did me wrong, like I would just be quick to just block them or not talk to them or, you know, get them out of my life or whatever. Well, and and you, I would say that's part of the process because you have to stop it somewhere. Yeah. 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 Is that something that your family, is that how they dealt with issues? Because diving into whether it's an environmental factor of how we deal with friggin or we deal with, you know, whether it's negative things or, or, or whatever it might be. Was your family, is that the way you were brought up? It was oh, yeah. just kind of. Oh, yeah. Of it? Like when when there was a problem um, within the household, if there was an issue, you know, whether it was something being stolen or whether it was, you know, just, uh, you know, something menial like that. It was you can bring it up, but then we're just not going to talk about it. We're not really going to take it serious. Um, and then it just turned into some sort of argument. So, so basically like it went from zero to a hundred real quick. We had to take a quick selfie there real quick. It, it went from zero to a hundred, you know, real quick. And I just think that there was no meeting in the middle. There was no, you know, trying to, hear the other person's side it was the person that can yell the loudest scream the loudest intimidate the most yeah. is 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 gonna get their way and win and that's obviously not how problems are solved that's exactly. how you create more problems <laughs> well we've yeah. i think we've done a pretty good job of of covering 2021 and and you know where we've been the places that and i think that we've we've thought about it more than what we've covered here today but as we move into 2022, is there one thing, one goal that all of you could say off the top of your head that come hell or high water, you know that you are going to accomplish or, or no. And is there a goal where you're like, boy, this is going to be really tough to do, but I, I think I've got it in me to accomplish this. For me, um, like it's definitely around health, and I just think, uh, you know, even like you know you were saying you were saying earlier, like you, like once you start a goal, you think about the end. Mm-hmm. But really, you know, like it's about losing one pound and then two pounds, you know, not thirty pounds and whatever else. And I just think that that's always just how I've attacked things. You know, like I'm not thinking about one step. You know, I'm not thinking about going to the gym once. I'm thinking about six months from now, a year from now, and being down 30 pounds or 20 pounds or whatever. And I just think that for me, like, I I just want to be healthier. And when I say health, you know, like, it's definitely a matter of losing weight. Um, You know, it's a matter of getting my mindset, you know, correct and just trying to expand myself. Because I feel like for for the things that I want to do, I have to be healthy. Mind, heart, soul, and body. Well, not just you, all of us. I mean, that's paramount to our our success as humans is yeah. making sure that we take care of the one vessel we've been given to make this trip yeah. and that's and that's hard yeah. i mean we joke about the good food and and i love to eat mm-hmm. and i love to cook and and all of that but i'm very mindful of the fact that i can't eat like this all the time yeah. and especially the sweets the sweets are what killed me this past week oh yeah. man all the christmas cookies oh man i killed cookies yeah. Gary cookies. cookies. <laughs> those chips at jen's house were so good too those chips i yeah. am what going to again? go i have i, I took a picture you. of them oh. i'm going to go get them because they were <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> and they they were good but it's the christmas cookies this year were I don't know why they just hit different for yeah. me because I ate like an entire batch of them myself. Well, not the entire thing. Well, but Michelle's pretty close. D- I'd made cookies on, uh, I think it was 23rd, maybe 24th <laughs> and Michelle's dog ate 
about 25 of them. <laughs> Bell got up and had probably half a batch of uh, ours, too. Yeah. That's I was the, like, oh, my God, she's going to throw up all night. I guarantee you. <laughs> oh, she didn't. Great. But really? she was not feeling good, and you can tell. She kind of said, oh, what happened to me? Why did I do Man. this Yeah, her stomach went. Whoop, yeah. I bet. From all the gluten and all the whatever else is in those things. Yeah, everything yeah. else. Okay, Mike, what about 2022 for you? Um, it's kind of multifaceted. So, Gary, you were talking about like losing weight and things like that. I think it's for me, it's more to be able to do things like I want to be able to hike up Dog Mountain and not die, you know, it, you or go dying on me now, you hear, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, be able to do some of the races and things that I want to do in 5Ks. And, but also, I'm going on, a, on, uh, Michelle's daughter's getting married in, in October and we're going to Mexico and I want to be able to walk the beach and feel comfortable taking my shirt off and not look like a beached whale. In you know? your banana hammock. I'm not wearing a banana hammock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary and I are going to get one that says MVM on the back. Uh-huh. Okay. I'll, I'll wear it if you get MVM on the back. <laughs> you know, we're getting that now. Anyway, go, done go and on. Done. I only have to wear it once for one picture, but that's it. <laughs> oh no. It's 12 hours every day. You have and to, we want to see the tan lines. Exactly. And then the, the second uh, part of it is, um, I want to surprise and give to more people that are not expecting it. And that's not necessarily, I mean, that can be in a, a multitude of ways. Right. And that's why. Whether it's, it's cleaning up their yard or doing some service project for them or helping them financially, whatever. Or here. I mean, yeah. this is a big part of that as well is is our desire to give back to people. And yeah. as good as this is for us, because y'all probably don't realize it, but this is very, very good for all of us that are involved and you don't get to see the offline conversations that we have that are, I mean, a lot of fun, honestly, but, but that giving back and, and just try it. I mean, I I encourage everyone. It's kind of addictive. It doesn't even have to be that much. If you're in line for coffee and someone's behind you, just buy their coffee. It starts, it starts as simple as that. Or give somebody Here's something that is doesn't cost anything that I think is one of the hardest thing people struggle with. Give people an honest compliment. Yeah. Not a, oh, your jacket looks cute. Pick something out. And if it's somebody at the store, it might be different. But if you have any kind of connection to them, find something about them that you can encourage them with. If they're great at handwriting, compliment them on how beautiful their handwriting is. And on the flip side of that, when somebody gives you a compliment, Accept don't deflect it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Accept it and truly say thank you. Because when you give a compliment and you see that they, honest to goodness, really appreciate it and 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 it means something to them, you will see on their face like, holy shit, I haven't had an honest to goodness compliment. Not a superficial, you know, we all know that type of compliment. But picking something out, like, Gary, your eyes are beautiful. So I'd say, <laughs> Will, your barbecue looked amazing. Yeah. Maybe that You just want me like, for my food, man. That's true. You just want well, me you know for the my... way to Gary's heart. Yeah, his right. Stomach. Maybe that person, Not just Gary. Everyone. <laughs> maybe that person would say, hey, these two guys really like my barbecue. Maybe I should bring them some. Exactly. <laughs> or invite us over for it coming <laughs> yeah. fresh off the grill. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like and, that one better. <laughs> and we will, We well, hopefully the audience will have a, an opportunity this coming year to enjoy some barbecue. Yeah, I got a big old Traeger. I can cook two whole turkeys on. Man. No, we're not doing turkey side. No, I know. I'm just saying the size we're, of it. We're doing pulled pork. I'll be doing my ribs. We know oh, how Gary boy. loves them ribs. <laughs> no, I'll do a whole hog. All right, we'll Have you ever had that. whole You're hog? You're going to do it in a pit? No, I, I smoke them. I don't do it. In a, I mean, I, 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 you don't get, they're not very big. You can get like 40 pounders. And you put those bad boys in there. Have you ever had one? Like a, oh, uh, so yeah, in Hawaii, it's but. little. Well, that's a little bit different yeah, because it's uh, they do. It's kind of a Kahlua style, which yeah. is salt. But the way I do it, and then oh, you get the cheeks of the the hog, and that is the best really? meat. Well, on on a lot of animals, but yeah. on a pig, like the a, cheek right down here, you pull it out, and it is dripping with the best tasting meat. You will ever eat in your life. Eat it's, the cheek of a halibut. Oh yeah, halibut cheeks. Same thing. Phenomenal. They cut them out. 
never heard that before. Really? No, yeah, yeah gee, because they don't get a lot of. Uh, there, it's not real sinewy. Yeah. And you know, most animals. That's why you want to get small hogs, is because they haven't been running around for six months or something. You want oh. a smaller animal, just like chickens. You want three to four month old chickens because they don't have the opportunity to build up a bunch of muscle oh, that and get makes tough. Sense. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. So we've got. We know how the key to anyone's heart is through their stomach. It's honest to goodness. It really is the truth. Back to back to compliments. Yeah, what you're right. saying is start with your spouse or start with your significant other. Or your kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. or your kids. Start in your family. If, you, if it's too much to go out and about into the public and do it to someone you don't know, start at home. Yeah, because abs- it is. Like I said, that's why I tried to make the difference between the superficial, your hat looks nice or something like that. But pick something out about that person that you know means something to them. And yeah. just watch that connection build. Hmm. And, and, and and go up from there. And it does you don't want to, you know, every day or but be intentional. I think that's kind of the word of this show is intention. Mm-hmm. Thinking about it and how that will help build that other person up. Because as we've stated on this show countless times, we're all going through shit. We just don't show it. And so when somebody shows that they've actually been paying attention to us, Mm -hmm. that means a lot. Mm -hmm. And it would be one of the biggest compliments to us. Yeah. Right. As a show. Yeah. Yeah, That's true. Well, we've uh, already cruised well past an hour. Wow. Let's uh, let's think of some, Something in 2022 that you hope happens in a positive way can be in your life, whatever. And and just anything that you would like to see happen that you, that you can have an impact on can be for yourself, for somebody else, whatever it might be. Uh, So, I mean, for me, like I, I would love, you know, um, just to hear how many lives, you know, this, this podcast has touched. Um, you know, so I think, you know, us all just having different experiences and stuff like that, you know, like I would love just to hear, you know, Mike's story or Will's story or my story or Jen, you know, really just help, you know, somebody wake up or, you know, it helps somebody, uh, you know, maybe want to tip more, you know, or help, I don't know, somebody just want to be better. And let us know, go yeah, to our Facebook yeah, page, yeah, hit us yeah, up yeah. on the social, this man that versus us, mood everywhere. It gives us so much drive to yeah. keep doing these. Yeah. And we do hear it. We do hear oh, yeah. um, offline, all, all of us have heard that we are having an impact and we appreciate that so, so much. And it does give us more fuel. For, oh, one more thing. So for me, like I've, I've got back in contact with people that I haven't talked to since high school. People because reaching, of this? Yeah. Uh, really? People are reaching out to me and they're saying, wow, like I didn't you know, know that about you or, you know, wow, you know, it seems like the people on the podcast really care. And it's just for me, like, that gives me a lot of like fuel, you know, to come here, you know, after working a long day or, uh, you know, because I want to give back. I want to help. Like, I want to hear these stories more. And so, I mean, it's been great, you know, for me to, you know, get, get back in contact, you know, with people I haven't talked to in 17 years or 20 years. Like, man, it, you're old. It's great. I am old, man. <laughs> Not as old as me. the though. oldest man on the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mike, what about you? What's something that you would like to see come to fruition in 2022? I want to be able to give back at least $50,000. Damn. That's it's a, it's huge. It's a huge goal. Yeah. But I have a feeling that it can happen or I believe it'll happen. Absolutely. Not with just my finances, but I think other people will get behind it and help support that. Yeah. That's awesome. That kind of be. like you see on some of these TikToks or Instagrams or Facebook. And, and that's really staged. And But I want to do it not so that we're like – getting notoriety for it because yeah. i don't want that yeah. but i want to show that look hey this is where your your support is going is mm-hmm. to help these other people that's awesome no that that is absolutely tremendous i think for me um forgiveness and i'm going to be selfish with this but forgiveness is something that i have to accomplish this year um for our good for my family's good for everyone's good because I think that we all have the opportunity to, to help others. But I know that for me, if I can really get past, 
a number of different things that have held me back and I, and I win, I'm, I'm well past, you know, the, the hard part it's maintaining that and those, you know, we don't like the word trigger, but those reminders that, that it is in the past, it's over and I'm all the better for it. So forgiveness for me is something that, that I really want to embrace and, and see come to fruition because that allows me to do better things for other people. And that's, that's very important for me. So with that, I think this has been another good one. We, uh, we see the time fly by. I don't think either one of you knew that we were at a minute 15 already. Did you goes Mm -hmm. by so fast, so fast. I hope everyone, I'm going to release this, uh, this, we're going to go out of order a little bit. I'll drop this one on Thursday so that we get it in before the new year. So with that happy new year, everyone, I hope it's a wonderful, happy, healthy, be safe. Don't drink and drive, get an Uber, please do not end up a statistic. We, we don't want to see that happen, but may uh, 2022 be blessed for all of you. Anything else guys? Nope. Happy new year. Happy new year. We gone.